We're live. Welcome everybody to, is it time for a debt detox? Um, for those of you who haven't met me or Miss Simone yet, my name is Simone. My name is not Simone. My name is Sarah. We're doing great already. <laughs> I'm, I'm joined by my friend Simone Millicis, who has an array of, of talents and capacities and brilliance. And um, But what we're going to talk about today is this little ditty, Getting Out of Debt Joyfully by Simone Millicis. Thank you, Simone, for um, this possibility to get to interview you about this today. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I love the way you say it's like filled with capacities. And just prior here, like my camera's not working, my audio, my tech, and I'm like, I don't know what to do. So we're just going with this. <laughs> not those I capacities. Have really I have a capacity to ask for help. And after I finish this, that is what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask somebody for help. You know, I just realized uh, recently that one of the things that kept me from traveling, like when I really, really wanted to travel, was a fear of asking for help, actually. <laughs> so, oh. um, yeah, like I was like, well, what if I don't know, like, where to get a cab? They're like, just ask someone, you know, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. but I would have to be willing to be vulnerable enough to admit I didn't know something. <laughs> you know, I was on a plane one day with a friend of mine and I'm not a weak female, you know, whatever. And I was on a, I was on a plane with him and I went to get my bag up from up the top and he looked at me and he said, Simone, he said, do you realize if you ask me, he said, I will move mountains for you. And I remember that was such a vulnerable time in my life because I went, I could just get my bag out and I could just be like, yeah, okay, cool. Thanks. And I could dismiss it and I could reject it. Or I could actually be this vulnerable, Not it's not weak, it's not any of those things, and just say, hey, could you help me get my bag out? And I noticed it's not just getting a bag out, it's like actually, you know, asking for help is this level of vulnerability where you allow so many more possibilities to come in. There's a um, an excerpt from one of my favourite books, and it's a 30-minute uh, thing on Netflix, you know, animation thing on Netflix, the the boy, the boy, the mole, the fox, the horse, right? And there's this excerpt in it and the boy says to the horse, what is the bravest thing you've ever done? And he says, ask for help. Help is not a weakness. Help is like a strength and it's like a moving forward. So interesting thing we're talking about debt because how many people just want to go, no, you know, and what if asking for help is the first step to something greater? So... So, so true, because it's one of the things that we are supposed to be shameful of, hide, and you wouldn't want to ask for help for that because you don't even want to admit that you're in the situation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I have my book. I have notes. I have tabs. I have all sorts of stuff. So um, the first thing I want to, I would love to have you talk about is in the book, you say debt is just a choice. Yeah. So can we start there? Because are you sure debt's not like the worst thing you could like ever do? It's bad. It's wrong. You should run if you have debt. Like, are you sure? It's just, <laughs> can you talk well, a little I, bit about it? It's funny. I've had some conversations about this recently with different various people. And yes, I do get it's just a choice. And I also, sometimes I think I created so much debt in my life just so I could write a book about it and tell all these stories and then, you know, contribute to thousands and hundreds of thousands of people around the world, which I have, I know, I get so many people thanking me for if they've attended a class or read the book, et cetera, and like you have dog-eared all these notes and they actually start using the tools. And for me, I know, you know, I did everything I could, Sarah, to try and prove that I could change the world, I could be happy, I could do everything I desired with no money. And I really, I was like, I, I don't need money, I don't need, and I so dismissed it, I rejected it you know, all of this stuff. And I was really good at getting loans or, you know, creating a situation where something would show up and I'd be like, see, I didn't need money. But man, if you even look at the energy of that, it it was a lot of energy. It was a lot of proving. It was a lot of rejecting. Uh, there was no receiving in it, you know, or a little bit of receiving, but not the receiving that was actually truly possible. And because I just had this such a strong point of view about money that I don't need money. I don't need money. I don't need money was what I did for so long. And that was my choice, right? That was my choice. And then, you know, I was looking at this this morning. I was writing something, an email, and 
I, when I met Gary and Dane, I was using the tools of access and I was like, oh my God, like everything here is just phenomenal and it's changing my life and this is awesome. And I would not use the money tools. I just would not use the money tools. I was like, no, like again, dismissing it, you know. And then I remember one day I, I sort of sat there and I went, this is crazy. It's like, I need to start using these tools. And I, I did not want to. I, I thought most of these tools were stupid. They're not going to work. Like I had all these points of view, right? And I didn't tell anyone. And I picked a few of them and I gave myself three months. And I literally, on old school calendar on the wall, I set the date and I went, okay, I'm going to do these tools for three months and see what shows up. That was a choice. And at the end of three months, I looked at it and I remember looking at my money situation and I was like, well, I don't have a great deal of money and I don't have, you know, it's not like it was like, woo, you know, money's coming in every door. But I realized a couple of things. One, my point of view had changed. And the second thing was, I wasn't functioning from this stress because I was very good at rent's due tomorrow. Shit, how am I going to get money? You know, and I would get it just in time, you know, and that was also a choice. And then the choice to change my financial, real, um, uh, well, relationship with money and my financial reality was really huge for me. And I know it sounds really weird, but I, um, it was one of the hardest choices I ever made because I was so comfortable being in debt. I was so comfortable having no money, a choice, a choice, a choice, a choice. And the choice to change it was not, not easy. It was not easy. It was tough. It was like going to a brand new gym every day and working a brand new muscle. And I was like, wow. And I realized I was so comfortable being in debt, Sarah. I had to make the demand of myself. I wonder what it's like to have money. And I was like, I have no idea what it's like to have money. So I went, okay, I'm going to find out what that's like. That's a choice. So I, I do get, and I know people get pissed off when I go, no one needs to have a money problem, but they don't. Okay. And here's my theory is, well, there's two people in the world. There's a lot of people in the world, but there's two types of people in the world of one that gets up and bitches and moans about why they don't have any money. And they could write you a list and justification, you know, of justifications of why they don't. And there's the second person who'll get up and say, okay, I don't have money in bank account today, but what am I going to choose? And what, you know, how many more revenue streams can I create? What action am I going to take? And you have to take some action in order to move something forward. So both of those are choices. And for me, I lived that choice of debt. Then I lived the choice of changing it. And now I'm living the choice of having money. And even now there's still stuff that comes up all the time. Like having money is a whole other, you know, ball game. I remember Shannon O'Hara said once, it's like, you know, rich person's problems. It's like it has a whole other shit that comes with it, you know? So it does not like you get money in the bank account and it's like, oh, every day it's rainbows and unicorns. It's not, but it's like, it's money's just money. And the second you make that significant and mean something, it will control you. So for me, it's, it's a choice what you choose. What are you going to choose? I love Simone that you brought up like change, just changing your point of view and how much the book invites us to look from a different place. One of the stories you tell in the book is about your point of view about falling off a horse and your point of view about falling down skiing. And I wonder if you can share a little bit about that today. That's, uh, that's cool. I, I forgot about that. Um, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> um, okay. So yeah, for a long time and even up until very, very recently too, when I got on a horse, I pretty much thought I was going to fall off. Like it was just like, it wasn't like, you know, if it was like, okay, I'm going to fall off and you'd get back from a ride and I'd almost be like, wow, that's amazing. I didn't fall off my horse. You know, I just had this point of view that I was going to fall off my horse. And then when I would go and I say snow skiing and I know Canadian people go, what? And it's like, but we have water skiing too. So when I go to the mountains with snow and I'm skiing, right, I learned to ski since I was three. I, you know, I'm pretty good at skiing. I like to ski fast. It's like, I know it. And I, and it doesn't matter what mountain I'm on. I don't have to know the mountain, but for me, I was like, I've always desired to ski fast and, and have this, like, you can, you, you see your track and you're like, okay, where am I going? And it's malleable. You can change it at any moment, but I never have had a point of view about falling. And I would say when I do fall, when I ski, it's, massive like it's you know because it's usually I don't really fall that much and when I do it's just like shit goes everywhere 
because of the speed I like skiing at, right? But I never cared too much about that and I didn't have a point of view. It was sort of like fun, funny, all of that. Yeah, but the horse thing was I already had this fixed point of view that I was going to fall. And for me it was I could control myself, my body, and I had the mountain, right, and the skis. And the horse, I was like, that's a whole other ball game. I'm like dealing with this big ball that, you know, if it wants, it can do its own shit and I can't control it. And so for me, a really big aspect of that that came about was control. And I'm going to say learning to be more in communion with my horse and get that my horse actually has my back. My horse want, desires to look after me a lot. And only, I'm going to say recently, is when I started riding, I would ride and I was like, my horse's name is Pluma, which means feather in Spanish. And I'd ride, no matter who was around me, what was going on, etc. I'm like, okay, Pluma, it's you and me. It's you and me. It's you and me. And I would literally say it out loud and I would like give her a little pat and be like, hey, it's you and me. And then I actually took that tool and used that with my body as well. I was like, hey, it's it's you and me. It's It's, you know, it's my body and me. It's you and me. And you could actually take that tool with money as well because, you know, we try and have these relationships, Sarah, that whether it's, you know, marriage, partners, family and all that sort of stuff, but essentially what it comes down to, it's you. It's you and your body and your choices. So it's you, your body, your business, your finances, that's yours. And I would so love that people start like, you know, we use the word inner strength that's been thrown around for years. Recently, there's been some stuff that's shown up for me that I had to go, oof, okay, where is that inner strength sort of thing? And unveil something in myself that went, yeah, man, I am so friggin' strong and I am not ashamed of anything and I'm here and I'm not moving and I, well, I'm moving forward, but I am not changing anything that I'm choosing for anyone, which also includes your money and also includes your finances. Like it's your choice. What if you chose to have so much friggin' money that everybody around you judged you? It's a choice, you know. And I love to what you talked about in that part of the book about how there's also people who would be terrified to ski, which I've never snow skied in my life. <laughs> and I water ski, yes. Um, but we'll get on a horse and have no point of view. And how like how it's just your point of view that creates your reality yeah. with said thing and how many points of view do we get to look at like in this book in the class coming up too that are limiting us from creating the money and the financial freedom that we'd like to have um yeah so shout out to the book you can get yours too um so i'm gonna jump to another question that i have look at the picture of me on the back i know how much have i changed it's like i look at that and i'm like wow I was staring at it today too. I'm like, wow, she's like, you are so, so, so different. Yeah. Um, so another place on um, this might be, this, this might be Sarah getting her own personal facilitation on a live in front of everybody, but. Asking um, for a friend. No. <laughs> asking for a friend, Simone. Um, the, in here you talk about avoiding and how easy it is to kind of go into the avoidance of your money stuff. And you talked at the top of the live of how that was kind of how you were creating too. Um, and w the note I took down was like the danger of avoiding and how that like cuts off your awareness of your choice. So if you're like blocking it out and I will, you talk about really how you did it with relationship. Like I will not, um, I don't want to have kids. I'm not going to get married. I don't want any of that. So you like block that out. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if we can kind of, um, explore there a little bit, like what is the danger of avoiding your money, your money stuff? Well, I mean, again, it's like, let's mention the C word. It's just a choice. And it's mm -hmm. like, but I would ask, it's like, what are you avoiding your finances for? Well, let's just use you as an friend, example, Sarah. <laughs> Let me ask my friend. One second. <laughs> well, I, I think it's that, that like thing with our greatness, you know, like the life that you say you want, but you don't know what you would have to lose or um, let go of in order to have and like all of the unknowns of where, and you said it so brilliantly a couple of times here already is like, I know what it's like to have debt and be uncomfortable. Yeah. Around money. I know that, that one, that one I've 
got down. So what is the beyond of that? So, okay. So let's sort of cut it to the short, short version as well, because let's address that. It's like how, if you're listening to this and Sarah and her friend, um, it's like, how comfortable are you where you're at? And I think people like that, like they like that comfort zone. But what if you could find comfort in something else, not in the limitations that you've chosen? Yeah. So yeah. It, it's for me. And, you know, I tell this story, I think I tell it in this book, it might be in the Joy Business book, that I was looking, I was in Los Angeles and I was driving around with a friend of mine and she was looking for an apartment. And we went to these all these different areas of LA and LA is huge. And I realized that, like, to cut the story short, there was one area where I was, like, it felt, like, poverty-stricken. And I was sort of like, oh, have we locked the doors? Like, you know, um, are we okay? You know. And then we went to this other area, which was sort of more, I guess, middle class and probably where the area I could have grown up in. And I was like, oh, I was relaxed, you know. And then we went to Bel Air. And I remember driving into Bel Air and I went, I literally whispered and I went, oh, we don't want to be in here because you go through those big gates when you go into Bel Air. And I... And I went, wow, I was so uncomfortable with this extreme wealth and I was so uncomfortable with poverty and I was relaxed here. So for me, it's like I, I at that moment I went, you know, I'd like to be comfortable no matter where I am, but not comfortable from, from a comfort zone functioning from limitations, comfortable from you're always in question. You know, you're, you're always looking at, at the possibilities. You're able to receive all energies. Because I realized I wasn't willing to receive, you know, total poverty and I wasn't willing to receive ridiculous amounts of wealth. Well, you've just eliminated a whole lot of people from your world. So if, for instance, if you've got a business, you've just, if, if that was my point of view, I've just eliminated all the wealthy people who come in, all the poor people who, you know, end up having money and want to come and shop at your, your shop or whatever. You've just eliminated. So you are literally avoiding and refusing to receive. So right now it's like everywhere that you have a judgment a limitation a comfort zone in place that creates you refusing and avoiding to receive what you could be receiving will you destroy and uncreate it times a godzillion right and wrong good and bad pock and pot all nine shorts boys proverbs and beyonds and down below you can see the clearingstatement.com where myself and dr dane here talk about it it's like, but basically use that clearing statement. And if you can't remember it, just say pock and pot, okay? Because you have points of view about money that are not yours. And that's the thing that I, I, I knew. That was one of the tools that I used. That was one of the first tools I used. I knew I had to get clear on this because I realized I would, I don't know, see a car drive past. It's a Lamborghini or something. And I'd go, oh my God, that's an expensive car. That's so flash. Or going to Bel Air and go, oh my God, these houses are so expensive. You know, point of view isn't mine. So what I what I used to do is I would destroy and uncreate my point of view in regards to this, right? Pock and pot it. And then I would ask myself a question. Okay, if I was choosing my financial reality, what would my point of view be? And I was like, wow. And then you could see the house in a different way. It's like, do these have beautiful gardens or smell the roses there? Or, you know, it didn't it didn't have this sense it was not obtainable, you know. But then you can also see the beauty in the the more the poorer area. area. You know, you, you 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 get to receive the beauty of the world in a different way when you don't create a judgment based on finance, money, wealth. Yeah, I, I have a similar story. I went, the first time I was in Rome, like mm -hmm. Maestro, I think it was. I don't even know, like in my point of view, I don't even know how I got there. Like, obviously, there's a million little choices, but I ended up there. And Dane invites me to lunch. And there was a group of us. I don't think you were, you weren't there that day. Um, <laughs> you know, he didn't ask me. No. Sad, sad for me. <laughs> but um, Dane took like, I kid you not, like 30 minutes picking out a wine. And they kept bringing wine from like a cellar down below the cellar, you know. And he's swirling it and sniffing it and tasting it. And I know nothing about wine at this time. I'm like, and I still don't. But um, I don't have as much of a point of view about that. And so finally, we have picked a, a, a wine from some other century, it seemed like. And he was, he was they, they corked it. They, you know, start to pour it around the table. And I was so uncomfortable. And as they got around to me, I just put my hand over, over my glass. And Dane's like, why aren't you going to have any wine? You know, and I was because he just taken all this time to like be this gift for everybody. And my point of view, which he facilitated brilliantly right there at the table, 
<laughs> was that it was it was a waste on me and wow. that he he had taken all of this time and that i i would if i consumed it it would be wasteful oh that chokes me still a little bit um yeah. and he just sat there and just invited that that new choice for me. And I'm like, but what if I don't drink it? What if I don't like it? I'll, it'll be a waste. I'll be, I'll be wasting. I'll be all this stuff. He's like, so what? That's, I didn't buy it so that you'll like drink it, you know, meaning like, you know, pound it down. If you don't like it, don't drink it. And it, that right there was like a, to a turning point for me to look at like all the places where I absolutely think I don't deserve for some reason. Wow. Yeah. And how many people listening to this live, like now or in the future, if you have the point of view that you don't deserve something, so here, I'm going to give you some home play, all of you guys, okay? I want you to walk into some shops that before you wouldn't have walked into. So maybe it's a jewelry shop, an expensive shoe shop, you know, a Rolex shop, uh, anything. Anything that you would walk past and the, the shop that you wouldn't usually walk into. I want you to walk in, try something on. Just run your fingers over the clothes or something. It's like, look at the beautiful jewelry, etc. Try on a pair of shoes. Like, you don't have to buy it. But as you're doing it, in your head, you can say it out loud if you want, but they might think you're a bit crazy. It's like in your head, it's just like pock and pot everywhere that you don't deserve it and everywhere that you've decided this is not possible. Yeah. Right and wrong, good and bad. Pock and pot all nine shorts, boys, probes, and beyonds. And that's one of the things I did. I remember going into this uh, shop in Melbourne, and it's a Rolex shop. And I went in and I, you know, you feel like someone's going to go, excuse me, ma'am, ma'am, um, you need to leave the store because... You don't have enough money in your bank account, not even to look at this, you know, but they don't, breaking news, you know. <laughs> and I went into this shop and I remember looking and I was trying to be all like pompous and like, you know, oh, yes, I could buy a Rolex, like I could do this, you know. And then the lady was like, would you like, you know, would, would you like any help or anything to try anything on? And I went, yeah, I'd love to try this watch on. And honestly, I was every moment I was like, they're going to kick me out of the shop, but they didn't. And I remember trying on the Rolex and looking down at my arm and I was like, wow, this is what it would be like to have a Rolex on my arm. And it was a beautiful watch. Like it's 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 so well made and it's beautiful and the way the diamonds were and everything. And I got to receive the beauty of it. And, of course, I didn't buy it that day. But I do have a Rolex now. I have a beautiful Chanel watch that I bought in Rome a couple of years ago, which I love too. And it's like that would have been impossible in my world years ago like absolutely impossible but you have to step forward into something that may be uncomfortable for you and start realizing that you deserve everything so i'm so grateful you told that that story sarah because man you deserve the world and when you're when you're being all of you the universe wants to give you the world you know it's like yeah it opens doors left right and center and you can just walk through them what next what next what next it's, it's so interesting to hear you acknowledge that and then look at where my life is that it wasn't so just not too many years ago. Like I would have never imagined traveling the world and having the, the, the choices that I have available. And it's funny to like be able to acknowledge that in some way, but then still have this like, so it's so clear that it's not mine, I guess is what I'm saying is because like yeah. all of this has changed and like why hold back the change or not make the different choice for yeah. financial freedom, money and de you know, debt. Yeah. And it's, it's like, okay, so all of you listening, it's like, you know, who are you making yourself like, you know, is it like, are you making yourself like your family, like your friends, etc. I'm really grateful. My father who passed away about 11 years ago, but he was so encouraging to me. He was always like, Simone, you have to choose your life. He's like, I'm here for you, but it's your life. You need to choose it. And I remember at the time when he looked at me and he said, you do realize you've surpassed your brother, right? Like in business, you've surpassed all of us. And it was a moment where I was like, shit, am I in trouble? <laughs> like that sort of energy. And he said to me, you need to go find another accountant. I can't do your book work anymore because I don't know enough for you. You need to. And he was educating me and teaching me to reach into something different, to reach into something greater that more match the energy of what I required to move even forward and even greater. And I'm so grateful for that because he never tried to hold me back or anything. And unfortunately, a lot of people who have families that if you do make more money than them, you make them feel uncomfortable. So how many of you are trying to make the same amount of money or less so that you can make others around you comfortable? And it's like, will you please give up that shit? 
and destroy and uncreate it. Times of God's salient. Or right now, good and bad. Pock and pot all nine shorts, boys, probits, and beyonds. This is your life. This is your finances. You, you know, you and the horse, you and your body, you and your money, you and your business, you and your choices. What are you going to choose? Stop choosing for others and start choosing for you. And you will show others that they can choose for them as you choose for you. Hallelujah. Um, okay, I have this other part of the book that I really want to hit on if that's okay. Oh. This is all fucking awesome. Um, okay, so it says money doesn't come to those who believe they lack. The truth is you do not lack anything. If you are alive, you are not lacking. If you wake up in the morning, you have everything you need to create everything you desire. Needs and wants are about living in the lie that you lack. I don't even know if you want to say anything. Mic drop. You know, I haven't read my book for, I don't read my book a lot. <laughs> so whenever anyone brings up something about it, it's actually really interesting to go, geez, that was really good. Yeah. And I said that. Really good. Well, I would love, I mean, there's so many things in here, guys. If you don't have this book, you have to get this book. And if you're like, well, so in my voice. <laughs> yeah. And if you are um, leaning into this live at all, just full disclosure, Simone has a, um, ten, ten, is it 10 weeks? Oh my God. I'm um, starting on um, April 9th. How many weeks is it? How many? I don't know weeks, but it's five classes, but they're spread over, spread over a period of time because the whole idea is I want to play with you guys and give you home play. And actually, I was thinking about this the other day. The home play that I'm going to give you, I'm actually going to redo it too because I know I need to look at some of my finances. Like, for example, how much how much does it cost to run my life? So there'll be things like that that we will look at and you will get the time and the space to do that in between the calls so that we can, and you'll be on a you know a Telegram thread so that we can all contribute to each other, et cetera, and, yeah, do it, do it at your pace. But, yeah, it'd be fun to come play. Yeah. I just wanted to throw that in before I went to my next thing. And then I'll tell you guys again before we leave, because that's what a good interviewer does. Okay. <laughs> so did you want to say anything more about that lack piece um, about believing in lack? And cause the part, yeah. I'm just going to tell you like my, my, like my brain exploded the part where it says, if you're alive, you're not lacking. If you wake up in the morning, if you wake up in the morning, you guys, if you woke up today, you have everything you need to create everything you desire. Yeah. You know why? Because you have choice. <laughs> but you do. You have choice. I mean, okay, here's one simple thing. I want you guys to have a look at this. So tap into the energy of money around the world. All the money around the world. I'm in Vegas right now. You're in Las I'm Vegas in right now. Okay. So there's a lot of freaking money in Las Vegas. Okay, you go, girl. <laughs> It's like all the money. And it's like, as I do this, I get, I don't know, I get so, so OCD about it, but I'm like, okay, so the American money, okay. Then you've got Canadian money. They've got beautiful money, looking money too. And then, you know, Australians have, we have really beautiful money. It's like the 500 euro note. Hello. That's like 700 Australian dollars in one note. And it's this beautiful purple color, you know, tap into all the money around the world. Okay. All the money. And I mean like all the money, all the gold, all the silver, all the platinum as well, everything. Now, notice the energy and are you able to tap into that? Do you start, like, what 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 shows up for you? Like, what shows up in your world with it? And then I'm going to ask you the question, is there a lack of money or are there just people choosing a lack of money? B. Yeah, people choosing a lack of money. There is so much money in the world. Why don't you start choosing it? Even just wake up in the morning, what would it take for me to start choosing money today? Mm. You start, you have to receive with it though, okay? And I'm even going to give you another another small home play. The next time somebody says, hey, can I buy Can I buy you lunch? Can I get you a cup of coffee? Can I do something for you? Can I get your bag out from, you know, the top of a, of a plane thing or whatever? Say yes and say thank you. That would be great. Thank you so much. Start receiving. You start receiving, money will start showing up. Mm. You also have a nighttime question that you talk about everywhere you uninvited money today. Oh, yes. Okay. So what I this was one of the tools I did for a really long time too, and I actually had it on a post-it note um, and put it on my bathroom mirror so when I'm brushing my teeth because 
we ask for money to show up. Like you, even, even you know, watching this live, reading the book, coming to class, etc. you'll start to ask for money to show up. And you're like, yeah, I'm asking for money, I'm asking for money. And then maybe you go to a restaurant and you go to order something and you're like, oh, my God, that's so expensive or I can't order that, it's too expensive. Or like Sarah, you go, I can't drink the wine, it's a waste on me, etc. So you've literally just like refused money. You've just refused the possibilities. So at nighttime, what I used to do is I would just pock and pod everywhere that I have uninvited money today. You don't have to find it. You don't have to, It's not about judging yourself. It's just about doing that. Pock and pod everywhere that you have uninvited money today and allow those doors to open back up. Because like I said before, the universe is continuously opening doors for us and gifting us so much. And then we go, yes, yes, yes. And then we go, oh, hang on a second. Um, I can't control that one. Can you just slow down a little bit? Can you come when I'm ready for you? Or, you know, let me handle this first. No, just freaking push those barriers down and all those limitations and just breathe in and let it come in. Be out of control. What if? What would happen if you're out of control with money? What would happen if you're out of control with receiving? So pock and pot everywhere that you have uninvited money today. Brush your teeth and have a good slumber. Create new slumber. And then wake up in the morning. Oh! <gasps> I've got blood running through my veins. I'm alive. I don't need to function in luck. I've got a different choice. Mm -hmm. We have to clip that. I just want to play it every morning. <laughs> um, okay. The last thing I have for us is one of the um, questions in the book. Um, and I'd love for you to just expand on it. Uh, what if you didn't need a reason to ask for money? Yeah. I mean, how many of you decided you need a reason to ask for money? You know, this was, um, this has shown up for me in so many different ways in my life, right? But there's one example I can think of is my last like long-term relationship uh, in that for eight years, then I was creating money and I was creating money for us, right? Not just for me, for us. When the relationship broke up, I noticed that my money just went and went right down. And I went, what's going on? And I remember talking to Gary Douglas, who's the founder of Access Consciousness, and, and he said, yeah, you don't have anyone to create for anymore. I was like, holy shit, I'm creating for, I was creating for us. And then when it was just me, I didn't have a reason anymore. So I went, oh, and so how many people have to have like this carrot dangling in front of them for something to reach forward? And if you have to have that for the moment, do it. Like, I know there's a lot of stories about people who are like, uh, we have this property in Costa Rica called El Ugar, and investing in El Ugar. And people were like, no, I could never do that. I could never afford that. And then the ones who went, you know what, I'm going to make the demand that I do. And they did. And they started creating more money because they had this like carrot dangling in front of them that they could reach for. So if you require that, do it. But what I'm going to ask is, ask that you actually just be an element that you start receiving so much money, you have no idea what to do with it. Reach for that. And everything it doesn't allow that to show up, let's destroy and uncreate it. Right and wrong, good and bad. Pock and pot all nine, shorts, boys, proverbs, and neons. I love that. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to wrap by inviting everybody to these possibilities. Um, I know it's time. Like for, for my friend, it's like time right now <laughs> to dive in. I'm going to call them after this and make sure that they join the program, <laughs> the Getting Out of Debt Joyfully program hey. starting on April 9th. <laughs> but can I comment about your friend? Yeah. Which is breaking news, people. If you're not getting it, it's actually Sarah. Sarah did reach out to me a little while ago and she did ask for help with her finances. And I was like, okay, so even her ringing me and saying, hey, can you help me, right, opened a different door. So when I was doing this class too, I went, oh, I'm going to ask Sarah if she wants to contribute to this as well because obviously she's going to get the class and using all these tools. So it's like, so her asking for help is creating her being here now and creating a different future. So what if we were here to help you? Like what if there was a contribution that we could be for each other? Yeah. And are you willing to receive that? Thank you, my friend. And thank you for being the potency and the inspiration, really. Like there's like getting I've, I've read this book before, but getting like back into it from a different place and then having a different intimacy with you now than what I had when I first read it. Um, it, it just blossomed. And I know that like being on this class with you, too, um, will then bring the like the 
the words on the page is even more alive in my world. Mm -hmm. And I'm just really grateful for you and your vulnerability and willingness to contribute to any of us. Thank you. Thank you. It's fun. Like, how does it get any more fun than this? Yeah. Mm, I like that question too. All yeah. right. Well, thank you, everybody. We're excited. You can go to simonemillicis.com forward slash G O O D J and um, join us April 8th, 9th, and 10th. Right. Is yes. 9th in the States, 10th in Aus Australia. Yeah. Isn't times just so freaking weird at the moment, though? I, might, I literally had to ask someone today, what year is it? Just to check when I was signing this form. <laughs> 24. Okay, I'll go, I'll go with that. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everybody. Mwah. Okay, bye. -bye. bye, -bye.